Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Off Point. My name's Les Steed. I'm Marlon White. And what we're talking about now today is our first property. Um, I am going to move house to my first ever flat that will be mine. My my outright bought it flat uh, tomorrow. And uh, nice. yeah, after yeah, we found it in October. It's really it's slightly annoying because um, basically. My biggest problem was I couldn't get a mortgage because um, mm-hmm. I've been a freelancer for the last two years. Um, it's all been sort of short term, sort of six months at a time kind of work. Um, and it's also been inconsistent because, um, you know, I've worked as a carer. I've worked as a journalist. Being a freelance journalist, it's job to job. It's not, you know, it's article to article. Mm-hmm. Not, you know, and then, as a, and then I've also worked as a copywriter for Airbnb. Loads and loads of stuff. But it's inconsistent and the banks don't like that. Apparently, mm. ever since COVID started, the banks have been funny about giving out mortgages, um, which you'd have thought they'd learn their lesson after the subprime mortgage thing crashed the economy. But no, it's COVID that's done it. And they will, now they're feeling insecure about it. So um, I found that quite difficult because all I was applying for, I was applying for about 100 grand because my place is worth around the 250 mark. Uh, that's where I was kind of looking for, which is one bed flat somewhere near London. Um, I found one that's beautiful actually it's uh near uh, it's an old mental asylum um got really tall ceilings really old so it's a grade two listed building it's absolutely stunning um and i've got grounds and i've got a pool and i've got like a gym um You're and a it's gym and i've got a gym as well uh yeah and a pool and it's this beautiful like old school hallway like a manor it. house it looks like, it is it's literally a manor <laughs> house and like and the flats are going around me are going for like 500 grand a pop which is crazy money for a two bed flat. I mean, it's a cool flat, but it's not that cool. It's not a million, pa- half a million pounds cool. That sounds like a hell of a first property, Liv. I mean, yeah, it's, well, no, because the thing is that I was looking around London um, and you can't find anything that's worth anything uh, with a London postcode for less than 300 grand. I mean, there were one bed flats. No, there were two bed flats that they're pretending are one bed flats. So no, no, one bed flats, they're pretending two bed flats because they put up a bit of drywall in the middle and everyone's going, oh yeah, this is a spacious, living room i'm like you can barely fit a bed in there that's not a bedroom that's that's a cupboard that's an extended wardrobe and you're asking for another 50 grand i mean this is the first thing that i found very difficult was that um i spent about a year looking um and i didn't know where to go to start with so i put down places that you know were familiar ish um and i wanted it to be in town sort of thing i didn't want to be too close to home because otherwise it doesn't really feel like you've moved i'm actually now about 20 minutes away from my parents which you know, and it's kind of the, the town, it's near the town that I grew up in, um, which is a bit odd of an odd feeling because in a way I'm growing up, but in another, you know, and moving on with my life, but in another, you know, I've lived all over the world as well. So it's not like it's the, you know, the first place I've lived that wasn't my parents, but it is a bit sort of near home, but it's a really perfect place for me. Um, it's a bit quiet, but I'm not going to complain about that when I'm about half, you know, I'm literally an hour away from London. And, um, you know, on a commuter line that goes past my house, basically. Beautiful ground. Oh, yeah, I have grounds. Grounds. Yeah, wow. grounds. I mean, they're paying two and a half grand for um, for the uh, for the upkeep of the place. It's a company that really likes to just ask for money for nothing. But um, So is this the first time you're having your own place to yourself that's just yours? Yeah, I'm paying the bills for the first time in five years. Wow. Um, as opposed to paying the rent. Yeah. Um, which is going to be new. Um, and especially with the recent energy hikes, I think that it's going to be difficult because I'm not used to, I'm used to paying like maybe four, 400, 500 pound rent a mm. month um, for, you know, for just to be able to live there. And I don't have to worry about these bills. But now I'm going to have to, um, you know, I've had, I'm going to have to sort of calculate my averages and, you know, do all the sort of adult stuff. And then also council tax for the first time. Oh, that's a motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to worry about that now. Yeah. And, and I, I've never I've never paid council tax. Because do, you wanna, just... do you want to break that down for like our American listeners? Okay, so you've got, there's loads and loads of different types of tax. Um, so you've got, you pay uh, about £200 a year. If you own a flat here, you would have to pay for the ground rent, which is the person who owns the ground underneath your feet. Uh, you have to pay them. I paid them about £200. I don't know what you pay. Actually, I'll actually admit, um, since being married, I don't don't know, I, I don't have any clue of what I pay in anything anymore. Great contribution just, there, Marlon. Great contribution. I, I literally, <laughs> <laughs> I literally, I literally uh, just hand that stuff over to my wife. But I remember um, when 
I literally moved around the corner from where I was renting. I remember um, it was quite a bit of money in terms of um, what we'll pay for council tax. I think it was like 160 or something. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm due to pay for a one bed flat, so I'm, I think that it's going to be a bit less than that. But I think, it's um, in Surrey, so it'll be about 1100, 1200. So the way, it's, way it's, um, it works out is um, I know with London anyway, it's broken up into different categories like category A, B, C, D. I can't remember which is more expensive than the other, but. Um, you have literally, literally no choice in um, how expensive your council tax is going to be. So it's automatically calculated based on how many rooms you have and um, which, yeah, which category you are. So you, you just apply for it when it, when you move into your property. Yeah, you don't have a choice. Yeah. And the things that are supposed to pay for the roads and stuff. Yeah. But I've started to understand now. I mean, I haven't even started paying it. But yeah. now that I've, I'm looking at down the barrel of that particular gun, I can see why my local newspaper, everyone, when I was writing the locals, everyone got so angry mm. about potholes. Yeah, you would. It's pothole season. We had pothole season between February and April where every mm. other story was about potholes because mm. people just wanted to know about this stuff. People started putting ducks in them. People started <laughs> getting angry. The number of phone calls. I used to get more phone calls about that than stabbings. Mm. And it was crazy because, and I could see why though, because you're like, well, what the fuck are you doing with our yeah. money? And, and it's, it's like, yeah, it's it's really annoying because, and as soon as you find out that they've been like gambling your money, yeah. you're just like, well, that of that million pounds that you just spent there, yeah. it should be going on, you know, I don't even know what, what it goes on. It goes on roads, cap, you know, like making sure we have a council. I don't know. Oh, the bins as well. You know, like utilities, things like that. I mean, it makes sense. But then, like you automatically have to pay this money. Yeah. You don't you have, have no choice. choice. Yeah. You can't you, opt out and then just whether you're renting, you make you make your rent more. You have to factor this in when you're renting to, mm. to how much you can afford to pay each month. If you have a mortgage, you have to factor that in as well with how much kind of tax you're going to pay. If you're going to, especially you, you just bought property. So you need, yeah. when, when you're buying it, you probably even had to think about, okay, how much council tax. It, yeah, it, it, I mean, pain I was area. lucky because, you know, uh, basically I've ended up and I've come completely clean because of the fact that I'm just freelancer yeah. and stuff. Um, I struggled to get a mortgage. And so mm -hmm. instead, um, and this is going to make me sound like the most white privileged guy in the world. <laughs> um, my parents helped me out. So mm -hmm. I've been saving up all my life and, you know, I've made myself a nice little nest egg. Um, but, you know, like I think uh, as a journalist and also as a teacher and, you know, having done all the things I've done, I've been living hand to mouth quite a bit for quite long periods of my life, but I have always been holding back, mm. you know, money that I, you know, saving up, saving up, saving up. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, so they've helped me out with that and basically acted as a mortgage. So I'm gonna owe them quite a bit mm. of money. Um, and I was just lucky that they had that kind of capital, which most people don't. And, you know, it's something that I feel quite embarrassed about because, you know, it kind of feels a bit like, you know, they own more of a percentage of my house than I do. Uh, which well, at, least is, you, at least you didn't have the headache of having to apply, apply, uh, apply for the mortgage. Oh, I did apply for it. I applied for like three or four and they and all you, kept rejecting okay. me because of the freelancing thing. But even when you, after you apply and once you've been approved, you, there's still, still a long process dealing mm. with it. And it's always like, you have, always have your fingers crossed whether or not it's going to be approved, it's going to be fall through. Like when I bought and my, that, That's the mortgage, before, yeah. that's even before you start the solicitor's process. Yeah, so like, um, during, I, I bought our flat, me and my wife bought our flat during lockdown. And we um we exchanged contracts. We paid our deposit that you're supposed to pay to get the mortgage, and we're sort of on the hook now to um to buy this property. Mm. But then um what happened? Lockdown happened, and then um because of lockdown, it, it pushed because there's a new bill. We pushed back our our completion date by several months, and when you get a mortgage offer, it only lasts six months. So now you have to go back to your bank. And I ask them to extend. Is that your... before, wait, Is that mortgage offer on until they confirm or until the process is complete? Do it complete. So I'll... so wait, wait. Completion takes on average now four to six months. Yeah. So you apply for the mortgage. Luckily, for you know, if you're not in a queue, then you get the house. Yeah. And then if you're in a chain, so like if you've got other people on that, then yeah. you've still then that mortgage still is six months. Limited. So I want to update it and be I'll like, want, hey, I want a bit different because it was a new bill. Yeah. So we're waiting for our our. our pretty much our property to be completed yeah so that's what we were waiting for so it was meant to be done that that year september but you didn't have to deal with any solicitors or anything yeah we did of course you had to do yeah yeah you're dealing with solicitors you're dealing with all sorts of people getting getting paying them all it's the money. weird isn't it yeah so yeah so we, you get a six month mortgage offer but then we got it got we got knocked back to december to the completion date so that's what happened with us so we, now uh, we're worried now we're worried in this period of whether or not they're gonna honor our mortgage offer or if they're gonna extend it lucky enough because of the banks were pretty good that extended it for us. Yeah. But, I mean, um, yeah. There's such an extra stress that doesn't yeah. need to be there. And yeah. especially if it's like, well, you know, I can guarantee the money and stuff like that. I forgot but, to mention what happened as well. The, way, the day that we completed, what? Um, 
uh, when it's time for our mortgage to go through with um nationwide, mm. they they um contact and said, oh, we 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 haven't agreed to extend your mortgage. They lost pretty much the, the email or whatnot, the paper trail. Yeah, that's the other thing. Yeah. I found there's a lot of fuckwits involved yeah, in this yeah. suddenly. Like, I mean, I I mean, not necessarily the mortgage side of things because they tend to be banks tend to have their you know well that's what, be a weird bank if they didn't have their numbers yeah. you know their numbers in order. But I think that for me it was the solicitors. So for anybody process, going through this this process in the UK, we feel your pain. Also, keep um keep everything documented. Keep, yeah. Keep, be organized, get a folder, keep it, like, keep keep it all all the information. Absolutely, keep it together. Yeah, lucky um, enough we had the email. What they they agreed for the for the, the, the yeah. Because if you just her. if you just ignored that yeah. and couldn't find it again, that's ridiculous. Can you I mean, imagine like now we have to pay hundreds of thousands somewhere. Um, yeah, yeah, it's thousands yeah. of pounds every time you try yeah. and yeah, even just getting okay. So like a solicitor will cost something like fifteen hundred pounds. It's cost us fifteen hundred pounds for a solicitor for four months. She sat on her ass. It's like shit. it was crazy. It was like I swear, like she just all she did, all she had to do, was gather a few documents uh, from various other people mm. and wait. And then she did that. Then she wrote her report, which was basically copy pasted. Um, and then and then she went through it all and didn't seem to really give that much of a shit about that many details. And then you know, and we're asking stuff like, what's this? Where's the stop clock? Which is like how how it turns on and off the water and stuff. And there's every time I almost felt like I could hear them and the estate agents who were also paying like 10% of this property price is going to these estate agents so that's like 25 grand and, or something and the thing about that like the average why are people rolling their eyes the average person like me and you don't know the ins and outs of buying a property or even selling a property no so you you hire these experts mm. like you have and you the, trust the, them like you would you a doctor. expect them to advise you but they don't they're not got, they're not there to advise they're, they're there to just do um, paperwork yeah paperwork. Paperwork. it just doesn't make sense i mean and I, they don't have the information they're not going to tell you anything yeah. they just go it's, it's, you just have to dig it you have to keep contact yeah them why do you have yeah i shouldn't have to chase someone i'm paying 1500 yeah. pounds for yeah. one job for yeah like it was driving me nuts and it's just like and you feel because kind of, you're british it feels kind of embarrassing and the, the whole thing about like the paperwork is all that legal jargon that the average person doesn't know what that means i mean i can kind of go through it because of the yeah the the things i used to have to do for yeah. um my papers is that you half of journalism is going through ridiculously yeah. boring stuff to find stuff that's actually very interesting but disguised as boring mm. and Council's automatic, but they they will purposely write certain things in in a way that makes it as unnoticeable as possible, so that you have to be really sharp on it. Um, but I think though that in this case it's the same thing. Uh, these solicitors things, it's and also I mean I don't know. I, don't, I mean there were so many forms and things I had to pay like two hundred pounds here, five hundred pounds here for a form. It's a fucking form, and they can't even. I mean they couldn't even write an email. My one was all right. But the seller solicitors sent an email that I shit you not looked like they drunk typed it on a on a text. It was just nonsense. And I'm like, you are also being paid fifteen hundred pounds, and you can't write an email. And there's me like, well, you know, like if I made that kind of error, I'd get the shit kicked out of me as a journo. And it's like, um, yeah. So, but also I found that you know with the estate agents and stuff, it was. Um, they were right. I mean, ours are particularly good, apparently. And, you know, I don't really, you know, I can't really compare. But it's just a bit, it's a bit weird. Like, I hate the language that people use around it. And then you go around this, I mean, the premise itself is just weird. You go for a little tour of this little place and it just feels a bit like, well, okay. So I'm there for five to 10 minutes, no, for 10 minutes, while some estate agents rolling their eyes and just trying to get me out the door, really because they've got 15 other properties to do and they're overbooked. And that's a little bit frustrating because you're like, you're asking for a lot of money considering you don't have more than 20 minutes from me, for me. And you know, I'd want to be there for an hour if it's just something that I'm going to try and think about how I'm going to live there and stuff. And yeah, and then on top of that, you've got, you know, you've got all the furnishing you've got to do and that's expensive. I've put, I've put aside about 15 grand to pay for a new bath, to sort out my bathroom. Um, I mean, it's a bit of a fixed wrapper. Sort out the bathroom, sort out the... In fact, you know what? I've literally got the list here. I need to sort out the bathroom. The I've got to get scrubbers, J-cloths, cloths, and wire. This is the little stuff. Uh, you know, like hangers. Um, you know, Have like, you got um, a sofa yet? No, I've been that, looking. That is a motherfucker. What, why is that a motherfucker? Because basically... You think, oh, you just go to the store and buy a sofa. No, yeah. it's not. It takes about six to eight months to get one. You have to like like if you know you're moving in like the end of what say in six months time you need to be looking at the sofa now why because they they, they literally I think they build it or whatever I don't know they don't have them like in stock I, I thought I thought it'd be yeah, like but you sit I, in it yeah 
I thought it would be like, oh, I'm getting a bed. You just go and get a bed and it's delivered this weekend. No. They're like, oh, six, like, it takes about six months. Fuck off. Yeah. And also, I did mine in COVID, um, during COVID. And that took like even longer. It took about yeah, eight months. I want to get a corner sofa yeah. bed. And I think they're quite popular because obviously they are. You know, corner, everyone wants a corner sofa. But it's just like, so, I mean, just, I mean, and that's on top of the two weeks you spend going around sitting on chairs being yeah. like, is this comfier than the, you know, is this comfier than the Dilstenar? Or, you know, like, you know, like whatever it is. It's like, no wonder Ikea is making a killing. So with our situation, we, I think we, I think it was like July. We went to, um, we went to um, the sofa store in July. I can't remember the name of it now. But yeah, we went there in July, and um, I, I told you our original moving date was um, September. Yeah, got and then they back put to it December. Back to December. Yeah, yeah, we didn't get our sofa to January. So you ordered it when? July. Fuck. So we didn't get like. I mean, these are normal sofas, yeah. aren't they? No, they're they're like. Um, well, they're a bit fancy, but sorry, the, for the, those of you, yeah, uh, for those behind the camera where we're filming, yeah. we're sitting on Marlon's yeah. dining room table, and yeah, the sofas are opposite us. Like that's ridiculous. Yeah, electric sofas, um, would um recliner. And all, all right, that. show off, much. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just want like I a charge your phone and everything in it. No, right, that seems a little excessive. No wonder it took you a while. I mean, <laughs> you know, they probably have to build. But that even from China. Yeah, but even that, even then, like even if you wanted a basic one, that which we originally went to the store to get we went for a basic 1200 pound sofa and ended up spending that double. yeah i was about to spend 13 yeah. pound on a 1300 pounds on some cushions i mean it's just ridiculous Self, I mean, the actually salesman, think about it. salesman get you, you yeah know? they do yeah because yeah, i mean like, you know like, yeah i was i thought that it would be like eight my budget originally was 600 pounds now i've started shopping around it's creeping up to go off point quickly when we bought these sofas yeah um the, the guy look, looking back at it we we found that the guy had no idea what he was talking about. Yeah, they never do. He had no idea what he was talking about. So we asked him, he, he said to us, oh yeah, charge your phone and all that. So we're like, oh, how does, the, how does that work? You have got a built-in battery. He's like, yeah, yeah, you have a built-in battery. You last about five years. Why is everything around housing just <laughs> bullshit? Yeah, yeah. Like, why is it all a bunch of people who don't know what they're doing, making way too much money for what they're doing, load of middlemen in between. And you're just like, why do you exist in this? And then he, he had no idea what he was talking about, but almost talked of it into paying more for warranty. So like, yeah, the Why, bike... wait, shouldn't you have a warranty with your sofa if you're paying twelve hundred pounds? I mean, I mean, my motor, my van is worth two and a half so grand. You, so it's like you and pay, that's got a warranty. you pay a hundred whatever warranty, like insurance. and you get um, after five years they will come and replace the battery or whatever that in the inside of the sofa. But guess what? The, when the sofa actually arrived, you plug yeah. it in, you plug it into the wall. Well, I mean, so they've completely fucked you there. I mean, yeah. surely you'd have some sort of criteria. But anyway, right, let's get off the sofas because yeah. ironically, completely made we're up. getting too comfortable with yeah. the words, with the sofa thing. Um, I just wanted to talk about like, you know, sort of, um, yeah, the list. So moving house itself, like, because I'm doing that tomorrow and tonight I'm going to head home after this. Um, you know, and I've got the list. And I swear I just sat there in my parents' place and just started. It was like, it was like Donald Trump doing one of those mind tests where it's like, you know, like lamp lamp you know like you know it's like you know, lamp sofa you know like or like camera do i need camera no i don't need camera just yet <laughs> you know like bleach yes there's 15 different types of, i'm gonna have to fill a cupboard with like cleaning products and i know that that sounds really dumb but i'm used to like topping up the cleaning products mm. but now i'm gonna have a whole like you know new base of everything and the weird thing the weirdest thing that crossed my mind yesterday when i was writing the list was which supermarket suits me the best <laughs> in terms of my long-term first house cleaning cleaning products which supermarket should i go for the, the thing um, when you when you it's just so dumb when you, i think when we moved into our old place around the corner i think we spent like probably nearly 100 pound in buying just cleaning products yeah and i remember like going i'm gonna to have the, to scrub the place I dry going, as well i remember going to the uh, to you know to the to the counter and then the woman was just like oh, you just moved in like yeah because you just like it's just like um is it floor mat yeah Gloves. I haven't even thought of that. Yeah. Anyway, I was going on the list. Gloves. Floor mat. I was going on the list. Yeah. Damn it. I'm literally making the list as we new, talk. New shower heads. It was all, it was all shower heads. Yeah. yeah. The shower heads are 120 quid. That's crazy. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, I've for got, a nice one. I mean, like, you uh, know. But then again, it's like one of those things you only need to buy yeah. once. I got it from Asda for like 10 quid in the old place, but I was like, we're renting. So it was like, oh, yeah, like, no, you can get little cheap ones. Yeah. But, like, yeah, but you know, the yeah. whole sabbat. I mean, and I'm going to have to redo the bathroom. That's going to be another three grand. Everything is so expensive. I asked my mates about it. And I was like, what do I need to start with? And they just went, wrote money. And the rest yeah. of them just liked that. And I was like, all right, great, that was useful. I, I guess that was the thinking. That's one I don't have. That was the thinking into us buying a new build that we don't have to spend a lot of money getting to put in a new kitchen, a new bathroom and all that. That's crazy. Yeah, it's I already, mean, what is that about? You spend 300 grand on something yeah. and then you still have to literally put the furniture yeah. back in. When I was shopping around, there was a 400 grand flat that was basically directly over one of the busiest rail lines in the UK. <laughs> 
And the woman tried to persuade me that the that there was a good view from the top that was worth four hundred thousand pounds. And I looked out and I was like, all I see is a bunch. You know, I knew the area because I grew up there, and I was like, that's the tip, that's a dump there. Down underneath me, the entire town is being re- is being regenerated, and so it's building sites everywhere. And she goes, "Yeah, see, there's loads of greenery." And I was like, peered into the distance like this. I was like, "You're full of shit," but because you're English, you don't say anything. Mm. You say, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah." And I look at them, and I, I got I got depressed. I was like, "If that's what four hundred grand gets you these days, this is depressing." And it's just greed. But then you've got like um. But that's why back. a lot of people are like live in London anyway, because like you end up spending what five hundred thousand. Yeah, and like, then the and cost the ex- of living here is higher as yeah, well. And the ex council plate um flat where like yeah, you know the guy got it for free, yeah. and he's flogging at you for five hundred grand, and it still smells of shite, a piss and all that. Oh god, why do people horrible. why do people piss in the lift in the, in the yeah? What flat? is that about? Oh, um, we were students. Yeah, we never pissed in. The yeah, lift. I never pissed in a lift actually. I know. Yeah, we. I don't think I have. Yeah. Have you ever pissed in a lift? I mean, I don't remember. If I was ever that drunk, I don't think I'd ever remember where I pissed. But yeah, I think I'd remember pissing in a lift, actually. But if this is like in the daytime, this is not like you're pissed. Why would you do that? I I guess it's because, like, you know, like... That's annoying because, like, um, where I live now, in this this block, um, it's all homeowners. So the way we, I think, treat the place is a lot different compared to, um, like, the council tenants we see in the other blocks because... It's just different. You see people. Yeah, well, dump. if it's not yours, you don't care as much. You should though. Like if you live, if these, yeah. are, these are these are brand new buildings. Like yeah, it's, 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 it's and really, you're representing really, yourself as well. It's really nice these buildings that we um we live in around here. And you, you look at look in the other blocks, people dump their rubbish in the street. Just the way it. they treat their balcony and everything, they throw like nappies and all that on the floor, and it's just like uh, it's just like why, why would you do why that? Why you treat where you live? Even if you're free, you live in a nice place. Yeah. So I'm just writing right whitewash paint. Yeah. That's gonna be twenty two quid. <laughs> um yeah. Okay, so going back to yeah, I mean like I mean just I also like they say that you should go there at night. I went there at night. Um scared the shit out of myself. It's bloody free. it's cu- it's quiet. Mm. It's a little too eerie quiet, but I I don't know. I'm quite stressed though. The bit that I'm most stressed about is because I'm now single and I'm living on my own. I'm kinda scared that like about getting lonely. Um, because it is the first time that in 10 years, no, 12 years, I will be living where there's not stuff going on all the time. Mm. And or uh, people, you know, I mean, when I was living on my own in Indo, I used to have a place and they, um, yeah, and I always had people around. I gave everyone a key. But um, yeah, I used, I'd, I mean, and I'd have someone sleeping on my couch half the time. But I, I think hate, that I here people don't do that anymore. I mean, I'm past that age now where that's what you do. I hate um, living in busy places. Yeah, it's. It's it's hard though, but I, I miss. I, I'm worried about it being too quiet, you know. Mm-hmm. And I'm just gonna have to sort of deal with my own company because I hate that shit. You know, I can barely I can barely sleep because of it. It's like lie there awake, been like. But I, I think oh. I think you're fortunate to have that experience that a lot of us growing up in London, especially we missed that that, that area privacy. that that area of development because um. It used to be like, oh, you live with your parents and then you go off and get your own place. For yeah, a little, for yeah a you can't, but you can't do and that. And then you meet somebody and then you get married. And, and you, you both sell your own yeah. respective houses. Yeah, yeah, and you not move into houses. But not even if, you don't even have to own it. Like, you'll be able to rent one. But like now, we've just, I've gone from living with like, like university, living with my mom, then living at university, then living with back with my mom, yeah. then moving in with my girlfriend, then mo- moving in with my wife. Oh, no, she, for the record, you moved in with your girlfriend who became your wife. Yeah, yeah. Not not that not. she suddenly, I mean, she's not a butterfly metamorphosizing. <laughs> it's like, boom, now I'm wearing white. <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> um, yeah, so, but I miss, I think I feel, I feel like I, I feel like I missed that area in between where I could have gone from like um, university to getting my own place then moving in with my girlfriend who yeah. then turned into my fiance. Yeah, I think wife. it stunts your growth in a yeah. way. Like I think that one of the things I'm looking forward to is growing. I mean, as much as I'm scared of it, I'm kind of looking, I'm apprehensive about it more yeah. than scared. I heard, I heard, sorry to cut you there, I heard good and bad things about that area of development. One, one, obviously you get a bit of freedom, but then the bad thing is you get too used to living by yourself. Yeah. So when you do eventually that meet somebody, ex. you kind of fall into your old habits and then it's like, yep. And it's difficult because you yeah. kind of are used to doing things yeah. your way in and it becomes your territory. I found that quite interesting because I lived with my ex-girlfriend, Lou. Uh, you know, actually, sorry, we shouldn't name people. Sorry, yeah. I lived with my ex-girlfriend um, who was, you know, a doctor. And she, when she wasn't at work, which was like 12 hours a day, which was hard during the pandemic because I was on my own all the time as well, uh, which again, I'm not a lost puppy, I promise. Um, but 
I was given like she was really nice. She was really happy to have me there, and I actually moved in with her because I wanted to keep her company as well because I didn't want her, I didn't like the idea of her being on her own. Um, and yeah, it's a bit more fun to live with your girlfriend than it is with your family. <laughs> and um, but she was uh, she was saying that yeah, I noticed that over the time um, she was trying to get me to put my stuff in there, but there just wasn't any space mm. in her two bed flat for me. I had two drawers, and when I moved out of hers. It took me less than two hours to pack because I just had my two drawers, um, just shoved them in a bag and then took a few other bits and bobs and off I went, um, which, you know, heartbreak aside, it was, you know, it was it was remarkably easy. But the thing is, though, that even though I had every intention of living with her long term um, until the end, obviously, it it did feel it never felt like it was my nest right. because she'd been so used to living alone for seven years. Because, you know, she had boyfriends and whatever, but none of them had moved in with her. It was like I was living in, not in the way, but I was living in her life. And whilst, while she wasn't a complete tyrant or anything like that, you know, it was her, we were watching her TV. We were playing with my PlayStation. But, you know, like we were doing things that were, you know, her plants around me, her hobbies, her interests, her artwork on the wall. And I find that, you know, I felt like I couldn't really bring any of that down because that's taking away part of what she is and who she is. It's, it's a lot different when you, um, that's why a lot of people, when they move in together, they go and find another place because mm. when you find when you f- find a place that's both yours, you feel comfortable. But when you're moving into somebody else's place, it's a bit weird because they have their stuff there. Yeah, and you like, kind of have yeah. to move in into yeah. that. And that, like, they're, they're naturally going to take up all the space. Yeah, It's like when me and my wife move feel in. invasive. When me and my wife are moving together, we're like, okay, this is your side of the bed, this is your wardrobe, this yeah. is your. We kind of already decided You've had that. Two wardrobes, yeah, we did. Just have yeah, one. we already decided that from the beginning. This is your chest of drawers. Yeah, this is where the other. This, this is, is me cramming my shirts yeah. into the side of this wardrobe yeah. that's already filled with all your jackets. Exactly. And like, like the shoe me, rack. Like, like, me and my wife have different bathrooms. <laughs> I have four pairs of shoes. She had an entire rack that went the entire wall up. I couldn't do it. Mm. I I don't I don't know how it's going to be, but I mean, I feel like I'm already not got enough stuff. I mean, do you think that you do you find that once you've now owned your own place, that you're kind of accumulating more shit? Of course you are. Of course you yeah. are. I remember um, when we moved out, like, because obviously we moved in together to the place we rented, and we had like, like, we had all of our stuff in together, which has a lot. But mm. then I remember moving out of there, and it was just like we we we, we moved like across it's a weird the road. Feeling when it's empty, we moved it? like three cars full of stuff. Yeah, and then you looked in the place, and you couldn't tell that we moved anything. It was just still full of stuff, and I was like, how we've got so many stuff. In here. I'm doing that today. Yeah. Uh, and like, it's, it's worse now because now uh, then now we because that place was already furnished. Mm. It had sofas, it had tables and all that. Now we had to go and buy tables. We had to go Wait and buy for sofas for another month. Yeah, we had to buy like TV stands and all that type of stuff. So um, yeah, it's, it's even worse. It gets worse. Coffee, coffee tables. Have you found that you have you met your neighbours yet? Yeah, we do. And do you get on with them? It's different now. I think our generation. The whole neighborly neighborly thing is gone. Really, like, yeah, it's sad, isn't it? We don't talk. We don't, I don't know. I made name. friends with my neighbor. Yeah, we don't. It's not like I remember like growing up in my town. Also, shout out because she's fucking awesome. <laughs> she's lovely. She's I'm, absolutely lovely. And I've got two gay guys on the left. I'm like, yes, <laughs> it's gonna be the best. Like, you know, like it's the single guy in the middle, and there's me. Like you know, it's gonna it's it's the prelude to a sitcom because we got a really really beautiful couple mm. who are like really successful on you know to uh, you know opposite me, and to my left there's like two gay guys who I cannot wait to meet. <laughs> I really hope they're not dicks, uh, you know. Like, but yeah, I'm so excited about it, and I think that that's because I'm quite sociable. But I don't know. I mean, like, but you were just saying, like, do you so you do you even know what the what the names are? So yeah, as I was saying, like going back to like living with my in my mom's block you, you, your neighbours knew you from a, yeah. a young and they knew you know stuff about you and you're like mm. oh that's so and so and that's so and so but like yeah since like living my last flat and living this flat like, you don't really interact with each other like that you see each other in the in the corridor maybe and you bet hi and then that's it um, yeah I, I feel we have, weird if I was to knock on the, my neighbour's door and be yeah. like can I watch TV with you guys the, the new thing we have is um, I'm going to do it but still the new thing we have is like a Facebook group we have like a Facebook group for the building <sighs> taking everything so online sucks yeah. so anytime we want to interact with each other for whatever reason like somebody that like somebody in my building complaining is, or something somebody in my building so somebody in my building yesterday um, I think broke their toilet seat so they're like oh do you know the model number of our toilet seats so just, oh, I mean that's yeah. useful yeah, yeah. So but, I, mean, I guess it's them. like and yeah. also it's a lot if you're busy then it's useful but I think though that I just, it's such a shame that people don't knock on each other's doors randomly anymore. I don't know. You have to like text their head or something like that. And it's like, why don't you just. You I know, think we've like, become more introverted. Like, yeah. Um, which I, I hate that. 
for me that worked for me because I'm obviously an introvert but I mean yeah. I would hate for my neighbours to be knocking on my door I wouldn't mind at all I'd be like that. I mean obviously you know like if you're in the middle of you know like yeah. if you're the messes around or something like that and you're in the middle of something um, you know we're having a romantic evening in you don't want to have to put a tie on your own front door but at the same time like I'd, I'd hate it if my neighbours felt like they couldn't just, you know, if, if I could hear my neighbour crying through the, the wall mm. for some, you know, about something, or if they needed sugar that they felt they couldn't come over, you know, like, or, you know, like, or the idea that we're not going to be friends as well. I think that, but the thing is that potentially I'm going to live, not with these people, but I'm going to be living in proxim in the same floor as these people for the next three years, three to five years. So I've got to learn to get along with them either way. It depends, though. But they were saying they had parties and no one complains, oh. and like you know, like it's great. And they're quite a young couple. They're like sort of thirty-five to thirty to forty. Uh, they're lovely people, um, and you know, like I've converted a van, and this <laughs> girl was telling me about how her boyfriend really, really, really wants to do that. So I'm going to make friends with him that way. And yeah, I don't know, but I'm looking forward to that. But I, I think that I make shit first impressions. Mm. So I'm worried about yeah, that do. now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, you know, like, oh, who's this big black guy? <laughs> oh, slap me now. Um, you know, like, but so, uh, I take a little while to get to know me and because I get nervous at first and then yeah. it's like, yeah, but so I'm really hoping that they have the patience to understand that. I remember, I remember, used to, I'm a dick. I did used to like the whole neighbor thing when I was a kid though. Because I, I, yeah. I grew up in a big tower block with I'm 20. still friends with a neighbor from mine. I grew up in a big tower block with like 23 floors with over 100 flats. So I remember uh, like all the kids, all the kids around my age used to like hang out with each other. So yeah. I had like my next door neighbor, um, yeah, shout out to Lola. Hey Lola. Yeah, and her little sister Lara. We, we, hey, used, to, Lara. we used to hang out, we used to hang out with each other, Nigerian family. We used to, I used to have, we used to be at their house all the time hanging out. Yeah. And then I have my neighbor below, um, Andrew, we used to hang out with him as well. Mm. And then the neighbor above. And then, yeah. I don't think that children nowadays I'll, would be that sociable. I was hanging around with people. I've, I lived on the seventh floor, so I was hanging around with people from the fifth to the, the ninth floor. Yeah. And your mum wouldn't worry. Yeah. It wouldn't be like, where's Marlon? No, I was yeah. probably up next door. Yeah. You know, and I think that nowadays it would be like, I because of technology, mm. everyone kind of, is a bit more mm. tethered to each other, but from primary. And I think though that, I mean, as a swim teacher, it's something that came up this morning, actually, because I was teaching before this. Um, you know, kids nowadays, there we go, there's that line. Um, kids now, <laughs> but old, people yeah. are like sort of increasingly more suspicious in a weird way. Mm. It's that hostility and that lack of, I don't, oh, you know, like the reason your friend, uh, the reason that my one of my best friends, Will, and I are still, you know, friends is because he lived up the road. And that was it, because we're the only kid, the only two families of kids that were on that road. Everyone else was a bit elderly, and I think that the thing that you can't really it shapes your childhood though. You can't really blame parents nowadays. Like, there's a lot of fucked up people in this world. Yeah, but there always were. Yeah, there always will be. You think so? Mo- yeah, look at the Mongols. Mm. Like, look what happened with the Mongol hordes. They came through and slaughtered. Now, I mean, I'm talking about in London, in the UK. Like, I'm not talking about like it throughout history. I'm talking about like, yeah, like there's always going to be a, used to be able to like play out in the street. You used to be able to do all of that. Yeah, but you still can. It's just that people don't because they're scared. And I think though, that you think you think if also because there's you, more cars nowadays. But do you yeah. think it is as bad now, or do you think? Or, no, I think that people are more aware of stuff. Yeah, but they're more they're more attuned to dangers, and there always were those dangers. But, but the do you thing think is, it was, at the same level is it worth? Yeah, now? absolutely. It's always going to be perverts. You're always mm. going to have pedophiles. You're always going to have people in society that so don't you, work well so you, think where you just need to keep an eye on people who you don't like do you think when we were growing up there was as many pedophiles and yeah absolutely and, and all those absolutely. Catholic, I mean, you know like i mean the catholic church seems to have had a good time mm. getting away with it so yeah i think that there was that but there was less of acknowledgement or less knowledge of it but now those facts have been highlighted do you blame the parents for like trying to remove their kids from those situations no, I mean, like, obviously, you're not going to... I mean, I mean, my measure of whether or not I like a politician, for example, is would I let them babysit my mm. child? I don't have a child yet, but my fictional child would let them babysit. And, you know, to be honest with you, not a single one of them passes the test, apart from maybe two. You but know, that's it. But the thing is, though, that... Um, but that's... I was listening to a podcast years ago, and this, I can't remember what the name of it was, but he said um, when he has kids, this, the podcaster said that um, he's not letting any man around his kids. Doesn't dumb. matter. How are they supposed it, to like get their matter. role models that aren't just him? He, he said he doesn't matter if they're his brother, his what? dad, his, uh, his uncle, his friend. I mean, just because like, you're no a man one... doesn't mean you're yeah. a rapist. But he said like, because he said you know so many like women, so many people that have been molested by their uncle or, or their granddad and all yeah, that. Yeah, but that is incredible. And he, and he mean, said, he mm. said like, it might seem harsh and the people might not like me for it, but I want to guarantee that my kid doesn't get molested. And that's what he said. Well, that. Teach and them stranger me, danger. Part, teach them what yeah. molestation is, and part then teach me, them what is and isn't right. Part I mean, of me, that's the thing. The, part of me was like, "Oh, that's a bit extreme." But then part of me is like, 
But if you do it, if you do uh, um make sure that your kid is, doesn't doesn't get abused by somebody, do you really care if you upset somebody or been ridiculous? No, I mean but, that's the whole. But age equally, or... though, I mean it just depends because you're also stopping them from making friends with people. Mm. It's like for the sake of an unknown danger, you're stopping them from making. Because I mean, like ninety nine percent of people are right minded. You know, we like to think. I mean, then again, I've also been on porn. You know, on Pornhub, and there's a lot of stuff about incest on that. Mm. It's weird. It is weird. It's like you know the homepage on that thing. I mean, I don't tend to go for that, but anyway, let's not go there. But the point is that it's just oh, it's creepy. But um, the thing is that what I'm trying to get at before I stop got sidetracked there was I think that you're as likely to be groomed on the internet if if not more so because it's safer for a pedophile well to do it that way you've also got people who you know I mean I've got a, um, a girl I was seeing a while back she had a situation with her uncle actually where he was a little bit of a creep and it wasn't her biological uncle but it was her married you know like the, a guy who married in and you know like, and he would like like she was having a shower at the age of 14 or something and this asshole came upstairs and just sort of sort of lingered like opened the door even though he knew she was showering and just stared at her and looked her up and down and then closed the door after six seconds which is fucked up and it's, it's stuff like that and but it's just like yeah and it's like i mean it's but it's everyone's worst nightmare to be accused of something like that as well um and it's like my dad said my, my, my cousin was staying with my parents for a while and my dad's and she was stealing from us. She stole money out of my um, out of my dad's wallet, which is really sad because my dad was getting her. You know, we, they all got her a job and stuff. Like that. I said to dad, I was like, "Well, you know, might you do something about this?" And he goes, "All she has to do is turn around and say, oh, sometimes Uncle Julian um, touches me,' and I am fucked. You know, like I am fucked, and I'm just like, I'm like, but you don't. He goes, "I know I don't." Mm. So he, there's that fear. It works two ways, and you know, obviously, dad would never do anything like that. And I know, you know, always, I mean, I'm not even gonna, not even gonna entertain the idea that dad would ever do anything bad but um but that's the point though it's just that all it takes is an allegation and the next thing you know is your life's ruined okay so yeah i think that you know like if you're going to be a parent then it's healthy to socialize them and i think that one of the points i was trying to get out with the swimming thing is that there's an entire generation now of covid kids who have um grown up without interaction and, they, and we're noticing as teachers um that there's that s very stark difference in their behaviours and the way that their brains work and how they socialise because they're very anti-social they're automatically mm. introverted they're very attached to their parents because that's the only person they've known that's apart from their family and it's really, really I think that is a lot more damaging to our society on the whole rather than you know and I think that the isolation that's provided by ironically social media for children is a lot more difficult um, because it allows for helicopter parenting as a standard as opposed to as an extreme and you also have um, a lot of, you also have a lot of problems with, uh, you know, and, and it's just kids not having the freedom to poke stuff with sticks or go outside and do weird, you know, or get in trouble. You know, like it was kids, it was good to get in trouble sometimes. Um, and, you know, I mean, obviously I'm glad we never got hurt, but, you know, scraped knees, you know, like, I mean, I went and explored a, a I explored a, a an abandoned quarry. That was definitely dangerous, went down a cliff. You know, and we went and did, uh, you know, I broke into abandoned buildings, things like that, you know, because, but I wouldn't, but nowadays you just wouldn't do that as a kid. Because your parents were like, where are you? Uh, nowhere. <sighs> Put your location on. I remember I, I worked in a secondary school briefly. Mm. And um, yeah, but if your kid come home 10, 15 minutes late, their parents are down at the school, they're worrying, they're panicking. Okay, no. And I'm like, in my day, like, yeah, the anxiety that comes I had like three it. hours to come home. Like, Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's like, you know, like if I cycled home, it would be like, I'll be back in half an yeah. hour ish. And like, I mean, my mum's a worrier, but you know, I wouldn't have to worry about the phone call. And also, if you said, mum, mum would be like, tease at six. And if we didn't, if we weren't home at six, it, we'd get told off, but it wouldn't be a huge panic. They'd just be like, oh, he's probably just not what, looking at his watch. It's like, as long as I got home by 6.30, my mum didn't really care. Yeah, same. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, 6 o'clock was The Simpsons, so we yeah. were always back at 6. Got to watch The Simpsons. <laughs> Yellow people. Um, but yeah, okay, so going back to housing. Um, yeah, one of the things I'm... What what was the thing that you were looking forward to the most and did you do it? Um, what, uh, the, the owning a property or... Yeah, about owning a property. Like, uh, what was I looking forward to? Uh, I don't know, really. Um, I guess just having a form of assets in your name... And also being able to technically do what you want, put up. Um, if I wanted to paint the walls, I can do that. Mm. If I wanted to do anything to the property, I could. I have the, I have the freedom to do so just because I, I own it. I think when you're um, renting, you know that's not yours. So you, like even like putting a nail in the wall to, mm. to hang up a, a picture. Becomes political. Although, 
Although that we don't do that, but I mean, if I wanted to, I can. Yeah, yeah. I think for me, because my building's listed, I can't reduce. Really yeah. I'm not sure what I can and can't do yeah. entirely. But I think that um, for me, it's the project, as you say. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just like, I'm looking forward to having a project where yeah. I'm going to paint the walls. I've already been thinking about how I'm going to do things. I want to build like a frame yeah. inside that works as a small mezzanine because I've got the high ceilings for it. And if I have a dog, then I can make a little dog nest <laughs> or a cat nest for the cat. And then I've got to have like, um, you know, I've got all these ideas about like sort of what I can do, but I don't have the money for it, but soon I will, because I just got a job, so I'm gonna be fine. The funny thing when you buy like a new property, that's like, if I was to take brand spanking new, you notice every little thing that's happening, a little chip, it's, it's very oh, annoying. Oh yeah. So we already painted in here once when we moved in, just because there was like- How long did it take you? Uh, not the whole wall, just like one wall that had a bit of dirt, like dirty marks on it, so we just no, painted it. Then why it's, would you sell something yeah. to somebody who's spending all that money and it's and it's not perfect? No, it wasn't, done, it wasn't done by them, it was done oh. by us when we moved in. Oh, just, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah you fucked yeah, that up there. Yeah. So yeah. We, had to, we painted, but is that, we painted just because you notice more yeah. those little things. Like if it was um, like probably... Uh, oh, Flaky paint. Yeah, you would yeah. do yeah, I've yeah. got to redo the window sills, I've got to yeah. do the walls, I'm going to have to clean the place from top to bottom, that's all Monday. Um, and now I've got to buy paint. I've got to do loads and loads and loads of stuff actually. And it's just, I've got two weeks before I start my new contract. So I'm dedicating those two weeks to but, that. But, but yeah, at least you know that place is yours though. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And I think that's one of the joys of it. And although the only thing I want to do is knock a wall down, but I can't cause it's listed, yeah. which annoys me. But again, I can't bring on that project. I'll end up living in a building site for the rest of my life. It sucks. So yeah, sort it. Anyway, right. Okay, so let's wrap it up. Um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening to us talking about our, um, well, about our first properties and what we're looking forward to and what it's like. Um, oh yeah, last question actually. Was it worth it? I'll say it's worth it. So, um, I guess we, when you buy a property, you see it as an investment and mm. uh, yeah, I'll say it's worth it. Yeah, good. I mean, I'm feeling like it's gonna be worth it just cause it's my little den and my nest that is mine. Yeah. And I haven't had that for 10 years. So that's gonna be quite something. Um, I'm still not used to the idea. I'm just going to be sitting there in a cold place, be like, why do I have a cold shit whole house? Um, for all the things I could have spent my money on, this is dumb. Um, but yeah, anyway, so um, yeah, okay, let's wrap it up. Um, and Okay, so um, ladies and gentlemen, okay, thank you very much for listening. If there's anything that you'd like to add to what we've t discussed or any concerns that you have, having listened to us talk about it, uh, please do let us know. Um, my name's Les Steed. I'm Marlon White. And thank you for listening.